Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea and I am super passionate about helping women of color pursue career opportunities in international affairs as well as helping underrepresented groups travel overseas. Today I have such a treat uh, to share with you. I had the honor and privilege of interviewing Ramatulahi Jalo. Ramatulahi is an international lawyer who specializes in human rights and international arbitration. And it was such an honor to speak with her because she she has gone through the gamut as far as pursuing a career in international law. She has she is a refugee from Sierra Leone and she has gone through many adversity and trials during her trajectory of becoming a lawyer. And today I just have a conversation with her. I I asked her about how she became an international lawyer and what sparked her interest in international arbit arbitration. So before we begin, if you'd like to see more content like this where I interview amazing women of color doing amazing things such as pursuing international law or traveling overseas or just my experiences abroad, be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell and be sure to give me a like because that will help more people see this video. All right, let's get started. So just to kick off this interview, I want to just ask in just to know more about your story. So did you always think you would become an international lawyer? Like what exactly is your story? Did you come from a family of lawyers? What What's your story? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, originally, I'm from West Africa, Sierra Leone. I moved to the United States as a refugee with my family. And um, I'm the first person in my family to go to law school. Like, none of my family, I've never heard anyone who have been um, to law school or who earned a law degree or who's an attorney. I'm like the only person, like, even to my extended family. So I'm like the new generation, first generation attorney, finding attorney. To, um, in my family. So um, growing up, because um, I lived in Nigeria as a refugee and then moved to the United States. While in the camp, I um, developed a relationship with my um, caseworker who was uh, working for UNHCR. And um, I loved the work that he was doing, helping refugees. And like I, I had an um, interest in working in that similar area. Of, of work he was doing. And then I wanted to um, work in a field where that, like, that involves international, working in an international area. So um, when I moved to the United States, um, I went to middle school and high school here, and also um, went to undergrad. And then in undergrad, I originally I thought I wanted to do criminology, but I switched my major to sociology. And then in that, I know like I wanted to do something that involves international. Anything international, that's what I, I had interest in doing. So I went to um I I went to undergrad and then I studied abroad in France and also I I I after um my undergraduate degree I took the LSAT and I didn't do well and I applied to law school but I didn't get accepted to any of the law school that I applied for my first time. So what I did is I worked harder for my second time taking the LSAT and then I improved my score. And after that, I applied again and I got accepted to Thurgood in Texas. So I did my um, law school in, in Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall School of Law in Texas for three years. And then I, I took the bar exam like the first and second time I didn't pass it. So I still have to take it again to get my license because I'm not licensed yet. But um, during my law school, I, I did an internship in Morocco, and I did a few internships in, in different law firms, immigration law firms in Houston there. And um, from there, I've always wanted to work in, in an environment where there's, um, there's different types of people, there's diversity, where it's like international. So I developed, an, I've had, always had an interest to work in an international field. And I have always wanted to work for the United Nations. So like it took me two, a year, a year or two years. And then before I got into my internship with the UN currently right now. And then it, um, it took a lot of like hard work, constant, you know, 
perseverance and apply and apply. I never gave up because I applied a lot of times. So I didn't get into any, any of the internships that I applied to. So after I applied to um, Winstertrell right now in Vienna, I, um, I just got accepted. I didn't even do an interview. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like after all of that trying, like it just something like definitely had to work out. And, you know, I really admire your story because like all through your story, I just see like opportunities where you could have give, given up, but you're like, you know what? I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. And like, had you given up, like when you like, you know, didn't get into law school the first time or like take your L your LSATs, you would not be in the situation or in this position today. You would not be like interning for the UN or an international lawyer or any of that. And so I really commend you on, the, uh, on uh, this perseverance. So what kind of law are you, are you in? From what I've read, you um, are doing international arbitration and human rights. Can you define exactly what is international arbitration and how did you like wind up in there? Yeah, so my interest in international arbitration developed when I was in um, my third year of law school. Because um, initially I wanted to do immigration. Like, this is also another, um, like, important lesson that I learned. Like, it's very important to not only limit yourself in one area of law. It's good to be open-minded and learn about, be open to, you know, explore different areas of law. So throughout my time in law school, I was just so focused on, you know, immigration. That's what I wanted to do. And then I didn't know what happened in my third year of law school. Like, I decided to, you know, to learn something new, to try something. And I spoke to my professor, and she, she, um, she mentioned, you know, international arbitration. So after that, I did some research. And when I graduated from law school, I attended um, different networking events and workshops that involves international arbitration. And then after I spoke to attorneys, so I learned a lot and then I like just fell in love because I've always wanted to do something that's international and international arbitration is, is there. So from there, I did a lot of research, attended networking events and that was during coronavirus trip. Mm -hmm. I was attending a lot of webinars that were having on Zoom that involved international arbitration and I learned a lot and I fell in love. And international arbitration is where um, you have states and uh, you have different companies from, from different uh, countries that get into, um, enter into a contract. And in the contract, there's a clause in the contract, an arbitration clause in the contract that says, oh, any dispute that arises in this contract um, may be resolved through arbitration. So arbitration is where you have a, a party, uh, a council is representing a party from, let's say, um, Canada, and you have another party representing a council from Germany. So regarding the a dispute that arises in the contract that they entered into. So they resolve that dispute through arbitrators, and they, they may have like one arbitrator, three arbitrators, or five arbitrators. It depends on what they agreed on. And the parties have an autonomy to choose how they want to proceed with the arbitration. Unlike the um, domestic courts where you have you have judges that usually try the case. But in arbitration, you have um, the parties, they choose who they want their arbitrator to be, who they want their arbitrator to be. So that's just like a summary of what it is. <laughs> Thank you so much for clarifying exactly what is exactly international arbitration. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really interesting how you wound up um, how your interest developed in international arbitration. One, uh, another theme that I'm getting from this interview is like the importance of networking, the importance of meeting other yeah. people, because that's how you know and about other things. Yeah, so, and then to keep an open mind, because um, yeah. that's another thing that I'm taking away from this interview. If you like this video and want to hear more about international affairs careers, or my experiences overseas, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the like button and so that more people can see this video. Also, be sure to check out heymistravel.com to see my latest blog post. All right, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.